Okay, we're back on the 570 uh, Tektronics Curve Tracer. And the reason we're here is, while <laughs> laying in bed last night, uh, trying to go to sleep, uh, don't generally have a problem going to sleep, but I usually spend uh, 15 or 20 minutes doing so, and I think about various things, and it occurred to me that it might be possible to demonstrate some of what I've been talking about with tube amps and the uh, nonlinearities that are introduced by transformers, speakers, and other things. Maybe I could show that on the 570. So I thought about that a little bit. I got up this morning and decided to see if I could do that. So what I have in the uh, in the 570 is a 6W6 beam power tube. I'm using the 6W6 just because it's cheap and I always like to do my experiments with cheaper tubes instead of the more expensive uh, 6L6s and 5881 s and so on. So what you see is the uh, a family of characteristics, but I'm only going to pay attention to the zero bias point. And the reason is that otherwise it gets kind of busy. What I'm doing is, right now, I am uh, I have the uh, 570 set up as it normally would be for a 6, uh, W6 did I say it was? Yeah, 6 W6. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is, and I'll show you the setup in a minute, I'm going to insert the, a primary of a transformer in the plate circuit. And now I'm going to hit zero bias again. And you see what happens to the characteristic. Uh, now this is the the vertical is plate voltage, I'm sorry, is plate current. The horizontal is plate voltage. And then this is for zero bias on the tube. Notice that we get the characteristic uh, ellipse. Now, as you see, you don't really get a true ellipse because of the nonlinearities of the tube. Remember, with a beam power tube, let me turn this loose for a second. You're, you normally operate only up in this part, but I'm demonstrating this to simply show the effect of a uh, transformer on the plate characteristics of a tube. So there is the, the uh, characteristics. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the resistance in the secondary. Right now I have a pure uh, 30 ohm resistor in the secondary. I'm going to reduce that to just 10 ohms, which is closer to the speaker that we've been using, and do it again. And you see, once again, we get the ellipse, but there's not as much. And the reason is that, uh, let me switch to 20 again, and 10. Uh, I'm sorry, that's 30 ohms, that's 10 ohms. And the reason for the difference, of course, is that the reflected impedance changes. And as the reflected impedance changes, the, the, the uh, ratio between the reactive component, in other words, the, the transformer, the effective inductance of the transformer, and the plate resistance of the tube changes. So that's why, as we change the impedance. But I'm going to go with 10 ohms. And now what I'm going to do is instead of a resistor, I'm going to hook up a uh, speaker. Okay, now I, I think you can hear I've got a speaker hooked up. Now let's look at the characteristic curves again. Now remember, we're operating this at 60 hertz, which is what the only frequency that the 570 operates at. But this is the curve with the speaker connected. Now let's go back to the uh, just a pure resistor. Okay, now we're back with the resistor again. And so 
Let me show you the uh, setup that I'm using. I'm going to have to come around here behind the camera. Part of the, uh, uh, I'm doing this in a kind of cramped space, but uh, the setup that we're using right there, you see in the center, I'll kind of try to point right there is the speaker and you'll recognize that from some of the previous experiments we've done. And then there is the resistor box on the left over here. Here is the transformer that we're using and it's connected to, uh, you see the red leads there going over to the transformer and and then the secondary connected to the resistor box and it was connected to those, you see these gray wires coming out of here, it was connected to the speaker. Now what's the point of all this? Well it's just a way of trying to show another another way to look at the effect of reactive loads on tube amplifiers. Now uh, I, I did a video called more, well first I did a video on uh, why tube amps sound different. I'd actually uh, I think three videos and in one of those I talked about the fact that reactants presents an elliptical load to the tube. Uh, then I did a video called More On Why Tube Amps Sound Different to try to clarify the methods that I used to determine the relative effect of the transformer and the speaker. And part of what I'm doing now is just to show another way to see the same thing. In other words, to see the effect of the speaker. And as you probably uh, noticed, let me turn this off for a second and go back on the other side of the camera. Okay, uh, this is with the resistor box. And now in real time, I'm going to disconnect the resistor box and hook the speaker up. Pardon the, uh, the delay. with the resistor hooked up and now I'm just going to disconnect the resistor entirely. Now we're just seeing the inductance of the transformer. In other words, it's just a pure inductor. There's nothing cooked to the secondary. And you see it's even worse. Uh, well, I say it's even worse. It depends on what you mean by worse. It's There, there is more of the, the ellipse of uh, the the minor axis is much bigger in this uh, in this case. So I hope that that's of interest to those that are uh, looking at tube amps and might help uh, give a little more context. I like to show my methods because that way any of you that would like to uh, duplicate my tests. Now I realize not very many people have a 570. But you can actually do what I'm doing here with just a tube tester and an oscilloscope. Uh, I show that in some earlier videos. I'm not going to try to repeat that here. Uh, the 570 makes it convenient to do these kinds of tests, but you don't absolutely need it. You can do these same kinds of tests with just an oscilloscope and a tube tester. So once again, I hope this has been of some interest and that you have learned something. One of the things I hope you have learned is the, that this is not, uh, if uh, I used to run a research lab, and quite frankly, if a researcher or an engineer brought me this as their only proof, <laughs> I would say go back and do something reasonable. But that's because they had access to hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of test equipment. 
I'm trying to limit what I'm doing here to what I have available and what might be available to a person who was interested in tube amps uh, enough to invest a few hundred dollars in some test equipment, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I, once again, hope you got something out of this. Uh, look forward to some more videos. Probably I've beaten this horse to death, but, uh, but maybe we'll move on to something else. In the meantime, have a nice day.